Welcome to another episode of KTM Summer Girl. My name is Simon Chapman and today I'm joined by Speed Cafe journalist Daniel Herrero to talk about the Australian Racing Group and its slew of categories. Daniel, welcome. Hello. Daniel, it's um, an interesting period, I suppose, for AIG. We're sort of in, um, I guess, a positive period for the category. It's been a few years since they sort of started to get off the ground and now we're seeing uh, mainly TCR and its categories below that really starting to flourish. It feels like to me at least that TCR is really starting to stand on its own two legs and is really in a good place right now. Would you sort of agree? Yeah, I, broadly, I'd probably qualify. Um, I think for TCR, the most important thing is to just really build some momentum. They've had a, a hard period kind of starting from scratch in Australia in 2019 and then having a pandemic. So we've really only had, you know, one uninterrupted season of TCR Australia so far. There's, um, there's promising little signs there. I think in the, the most recently completed season, we started to see a little bit of, uh, of what it was about. The addition of Chas Mostert certainly brought a, a profile to it. Um, I think we're starting to get a feel though. It's, it's very much a youngsters category, which is probably what that sort of uh, type of racing and a type of car is aimed at. Yeah, for sure. It certainly felt like in the events that we had this year that there was a, a good balance, like you say, between you know the pro drivers, you know the likes of Chas Moss at Gartanda, even Lee Holdsworth making some cameo appearances, and you know another few young guys like Jay Hansen and a, another bloke like uh, Jordan Cox, for example, who was. You know, made famous by that um, that pass over the top of the mountain and has gone global on YouTube. But um, yeah, it feels like TCR is starting to stand on its own two legs. So for TCR, how crucial are the next two to three years for that category? Oh yeah, uh, most definitely. This is the time where they need to to start to bed themselves in and uh, and really establish themselves. I think you know it's something that they need is sort of a, to renew the connection with TCR around the world. We were nearly going to have that. We were nearly going to see Will Brown go overseas and do a couple of events for Hyundai in either a WTCR or a European. And obviously that didn't happen. Uh, Hyundai you know, continues to show good interest in TCR Australia. They've probably been the most involved of uh, any OEM um, Obviously, Melbourne Performance Centre has some good links with um, Audi being the sort of local outpost for Volkswagen Audi Group. So, you know, we saw Christopher Mees come out for Bathurst. Hopefully, we can get a bit more of that. I, I think the key for TCR, it's, it's obviously a different type of category to supercars. I mean, it's still got four wheels and a, a driver sits inside them, but it's a bit different. I think its point of difference in part is going to be forming that connection with the, the rest of the world and hopefully we'll see some cross-pollination there. For sure. I, I, I want to touch on uh, some of the other categories that AIG is sort of starting to, I guess, grow. And one of them that's really stood out for me of late is the S5000 category, which is quite possibly the most Australian category you could think of, you know, with a V8-powered single-seater, you know, with these big massive tyres on the rear and a nice big wing. Do you think they need to maybe sort of, maybe, I don't know, try and change sort of the, the philosophy around that category a little bit? It feels like there's maybe a little bit too much emphasis on, on guest drivers who are maybe causing them a little bit more trouble than it's worth. Yeah, S5000 is an interesting one. Like you say, it's kind of um, really different to anything we can really think of around the world at the moment. Um, you know, it obviously had interesting origins. Um, originally, it was supposed to be a, a, you know, a call back to the Tasman Series days in Formula 5000. It's the name. Um, I think they've done that pretty well. I think the cars themselves uh, are pretty good. There are probably some refinements that they need to make. They know that. They're working on it. Um, you know, they're... They're exciting cars. They go fast. We saw that at Bathurst. They were backed off to meet the power to weight requirement. I think what we need from S5000 is, yeah, just a little bit more, um, I guess, direction or attention to what exactly they want the category to be. All the building blocks are there. We just need to find out exactly where its position is in Australian motorsport. 
Yeah, for sure. It, it doesn't feel like other, I suppose, junior formula as such. It doesn't feel like it fits in with, you know, the regional Formula 3 or the FIA Formula 3 sort of moniker. And it's interesting, like you say, you know, the origins of that category. I remember initially when, you know, we sort of had the Formula Thunder 5000 concept, there was no real sort of desire to get young guys in it. And, and now the category is certainly becoming a place where, you know, we're seeing young guys come in, you know, like Aaron Cameron having a really good go at Bathurst. He did really well in that Tasman Cup series. So, but yeah, I, I think I tend to agree with your, your sort of uh, theory around creating an identity for the category. And I suppose, is the Australian Drivers' Championship where it really needs to focus its efforts and maybe less so on things like the Tasman Cup? Yeah, I mean, the again, it was hard this year. The Australian Drivers' Championship only ended up being four rounds and that was kind of done in you know, May, uh, second of May, and, they, and uh, then we didn't go racing again. Um, look, I, I think if it can be a solid national level category, I think that's a tick press 5,000. Like you say, it's not really, it's not... You know, it's, it's not part of the, the Formula One ladder for sure. That's not really what it's about. It was never conceived to be that way. Um, yeah, you know, it's a solid entertainment category for people who, who like their open wheelers a bit raw and uh, and a bit out there. Uh, the Australian Bringing the Australian Drivers' Championship back is great. I think, you know, they, they need some more cars on the grid. Obviously, there have been uh, hurdles with that this year. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. The, like I said, there it has a lot of potential. It just needs to bed in and the, and figure out really what it needs to be. Yeah, for sure. It feels like uh, ARG on the whole is in a pretty good place. Um, tell us about you know GT World Challenge, TCM, Trans Am, Super Three. They all seem to be doing reasonably well and getting really good entries at the moment. Mm, GT World Challenge is um, it's actually probably one of the big success stories in terms of you know ARG taking over that and rejuvenating it a bit and you've got um triple uh, eight is now a fixture in that the good thing is that well, as much as australian gt had a really good period a few years ago gt world challenge is now really connected with what gt racing is and um and you know a strong australian gt GT World Challenge Australia is, you know, good for the Bathurst 12 hour and vice versa. Um, we'll talk about that in another episode. Um, I think, you know, GT World Challenge is great. They've got, um, you know, Ken Collier is running that for ARG as well. He knows what he's doing. Experience from the sort of recent heyday of Australian GT, you know, exciting cars, really good GT3 teams. Like you see, Triple Eight, Groves, Audi Sport. Um, yeah, that, that's been exciting. You just need to see a bit more regular racing again. Uh, Trans Am is an interesting one. I, I think we're starting to see that that's kind of becoming part of the ladder to supercars, which is an interesting one. It's kind of, you know, it's obviously still, still relatively new to Australia, but it seems to kind of be the stepping stone to Super 3 or Super 2, which is good because they are broadly similar cars, but the, uh, the Trans Ams are much cheaper and much simpler. Touring Car Masters is uh, an interesting one. Um, again, they, you know, they, some of the competitors were, uh, were not happy about how that was being treated in 2021. There's some uh, growing pains there now that's part of the ARG structure. I think they're starting to, to put that right, but we'll see. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's a good mix of categories and... Um, and also a good national platform and television platform as well and having those Motorsport Australia Championships events. I think that works well for them that those, they kind of get their own place to play rather than being in the shadow of supercars all the time. And I think that deal that they've got with Channel 7 seems to be doing them a world of good as well, not only for ARG, but for supercars and for Channel 7, you know, I guess being able to sort of fill those gaps when supercars isn't on free to wear. Yeah, and I know there was some thought that, you know, maybe TCR ends up at a lot of supercars events next year because of the, um, you know, AIG being a part owner. Now, I, I think it's probably good for TCR to stay away from there at least for a little while and uh, and kind of be the, 
big fish in a smaller pond rather than getting smothered by supercars. I think that's the way to, to build up its, you know, presence and its identity. So I think that's good. And then, you know, like you said, we get, we now get, you know, really high level, high quality national motorsport events for look, it's about 20 weekends a year now, uh, instead of, you know, about 14. I think that can only be positive. And one thing that seems to be doing really well at the moment is the Bathurst 6 hour, which is oversubscribed for entries at the moment. But there is maybe a little bit of, I guess, conjecture at the moment in the background as far as driver eligibility goes. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Mm, so the Bathurst 6 hour was um, probably a standout this year. I think, I guess it comes down to Shane Van Gisberg and him wanting to get involved instantly, you know, gave that event big appeal. He wanted to see how he went. It was you know, something to keep us occupied over Easter, which is, you know, has in, you know, in the past been a bit of a dead time for Australian motorsport. Um, and there were whispers a little while back that there'd be more supercars drivers involved. The, um, you know, the eligibility and the, the driver seating, they brought the driver seating in so you don't have you know, all pro combinations coming in and, and dominating that event. You don't have sort of, you know, factory teams or pseudo factory teams or factory driver lineups coming in and dominating. I think that's a good thing. I think the character of that event and of production car racing, it is a little bit amateur. It is a bit grassroots. You know, it's good to have the professionals come in and, and bring some of that interest. But I don't think you want to over, you know, professionalise an event or a race like that. So I, I think it's a good balance. There are probably some tweaks um, or maybe just a little bit more clarity about um, eligibility. But no, I think that's probably on the right track as well. Just lastly, there's one uh, event, obviously, that we're all looking forward to at the end of 2022, and that's obviously the Bathurst International finally getting off the ground. Uh, what do you sort of expect from that event? Are we going to see a massive sort of song and dance about TCR and hopefully see some international drivers there? Well, I hope so, because that's basically the reason for that event being the, uh, the Super Cheap Auto Bathurst International. So, yeah, um, hopefully it's third time lucky. We uh, didn't get it up in 2020, obviously. 2021, it kind of got folded into... The 1,000, it'll be interesting to see exactly what form the, the TCR component takes. Look, I, I don't think, well, I mean, I don't think we'll get cars, we'll get drivers out, hopefully. It's, it's like GT3, the, the cars stay in the country, the drivers move around. So I think there'll be a lot of TCR drivers from overseas that will see Bathurst and will want to have a crack at that. That's kind of the appeal of the Bathurst 12 hour as well. They have spa, but Mount Panorama is a great track and a world famous track as well. And you'll have a different type of driver that wants to come to experience that now. So uh, touch wood with regard to travel and COVID and all these things. But yeah, hopefully a big international influx and to circle back to the earlier point, I think that can only benefit TCR Australia locally as well. Yeah, for sure. Certainly excited about the 2022 Super G Bordeaux TCR Australia series and all the categories associated with the Australian Racing Group. Daniel, it's been great to have you on board. That concludes another episode of KTM Summer Grill. Stay tuned tomorrow for another show covering all the big topics from the 2021 season. As part of this year's KTM Summer Grill, each week KTM is giving away the perfect summer beach pack, which includes an umbrella, cap, gym bag, and key holder. To enter the draw, head to speedcafe.com or hit the link in the description below.